multiverse is real. And thanks to DC, they overly complicated it with the Omniverse. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome, heroes, to the Crit Academy. I am your host, Justin. And I'm your co-host, Ian. Brandon is on his way. He got held up. Being bad. <laughs> yep. Today, we hope to inspire you with creative content that you can bring with you on your next adventure. Today, we are discussing Mordekainen's Guide to Monsters of the Multiverse. All the new content, um, the new changes. Mostly, we're going to talk about the changes <laughs> because that's the thing everyone cares about. Uh, it's what I care about. Um, <laughs> so we're super excited to delve into it. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Wizard to finding a way to empty my coin purse more than I needed it to yep. by forcing me to buy this in a pack with books I already have. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of our, our one big criticism so far because like, we like the book itself, but the way they're releasing it is not cool because they are selling it so far at only a three pack, which contains Xanathar's and Tasha's, which most, most long time have. players already own. So thanks and for that. And they're not set to stand alone until May. And they don't even have it on D&D Beyond until May, which was odd. So, but Which is, my, that's one of my biggest gripes. So, so once we, means, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> so once we hit May, it'll be all good, but still. Uh, <laughs> my work is not, my mic is not loud. Let me, uh, ooh, let me double check that. Well, it's like saying it's you talking. That's impressive. Oh, shush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also standing back far enough so I could do this all right so um we're gonna there's a lot to talk about in the mordenkainen's uh monsters of the multiverse first I, we do want to get into some of the the different chapters in this book it is mostly a monster ver a monster book but the other okay. part of it is really really nice now the other complaint i have heard from some people say say about this comes from miss like some, some comment says see on the, on the lines of is like Okay, so this book is only just play races that we already got and monsters that we've been released. So why are we bringing this all over again? And you know what? That's a fair question. That's true. But, and believe me, there's quite a few dots after that but. <laughs> because yes, it is races where we've seen, both playable and monster-wise, but they've all been revamped. <laughs> yes, and if anybody that has picked up the Xanathers and the Tajas knows that they've been progressively making changes and balancing balances to the game. And this has all been implemented in Mordekaiden's guide to monsters in the multiverse, uh, specifically for the races, which by the way, um, in their first chapter, the fantastical races, you get over 30 options for player characters, uh, complementing the options in the player's handbook and other D and D books. Um, there are a few that are missing. We were actually having this discussion off air, um yep. considering it's a book of multiverse and it doesn't have all of the characters from Ravnica I was a little upset because some of those yep. are some of my favorites and they have like some some from Theros but not all like they have the satyrs in there and the minotaurs but mm -hmm. they don't have the leon in which I thought was an odd omission <laughs> yeah and so we don't know what's going in maybe they're just trying to get a page count or what the deal yep. is but uh and they don't have the dragonborn in there but they also had the dragonborn fizzbanes which also mm -hmm. just came out now granted I can see why like, okay, on one hand, this business also just came out, but on the flip side, it would have been a separate thing in one place, so... So let's talk about some of the, the, the changes. Obviously, the big one's going to be the ability score increases, right? Um, for those of you who don't know, um, for a long time, D&D &D races have had specific stats. So, for instance, an orc always got a plus two to strength, then they got a plus one to con, right? Yeah. So, uh, what they decided to do, um, if you picked up Tasha's, you're already aware, that instead of saying these are the stats that race gets, because they're not all the same, and I think any show that showed you goblins, they're not all the same. You have big muscular ones, you have small scrawny ones, and so by giving that versatility to the player, it means they can build the character that they want without it uh, suffering some other way. For instance, if I want to play an orc wizard, I'm going to it's really going to, sure, I'm going to have a higher strength, but I'm never going to benefit from that. Right. And when I do, it's going to be very rarely. So for being able to apply those stats wherever you want yep. is is a benefit in the player's hands. Now, you still want that plus two strength within con with your wizard? Go ahead. You can just put them in there. But now other people aren't held to that same thing. And I think that, honestly, in my opinion, for customization purposes, I think that was a good design move. I guess you can both ways for that one, but that's oh. another topic unto itself, too. Yeah, that's quite literally the topic we're discussing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, like, like, I mean, like, it makes sense, for example, like a halfling not being as strong as a half-orc, but that's another topic. Well, but doesn't that depend on the individual character? 
if you got a halfling that's been cranking out, busting, busting weights at the gym every single day, but you got an orc who is lazy and doesn't, you know, and only eats salads and is very scrawny and shit. But at the same time, like it makes sense that a wolf is stronger than a chihuahua. It depends. But you get, I, I'm pretty sure a chihuahua's gonna lose to a tug of war every time. In a world of magic, I don't know that that's true. Because our adventurers are ha- chihuahua sized to dragons. Yeah. But you also get what I'm saying. I see what you're like, saying. <laughs> you're compa- comparing something non magical to a world of magic. Anyway, so, uh, and I think that's one thing that makes it how you can get away with that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that they changed for the races, uh, which, by the way, the races they got in here are really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed the the fairy and the Har- Harrigan, which are in uh, the Witch Light book that we covered recently. I'm surprised the Owlings were in there, um, too, for that matter. Galcinia says, I heard a lot of flack about Tasha's making every character a Mary Sue. And what uh, I ended up seeing was a bigger variety of characters. And it was awesome. Apps of freaking lootly. Um, while everyone wants to put all their points into their top priority stat, yep. some people want to cover their weaknesses because <laughs> that's the type of player I am, uh, especially when uh, everything is tied to like hit points and stuff. And con is something that often doesn't get as much attention because there's few races that benefit from it uh, or well, that don't benefit from it, that have to fight other things. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so aside, they also made changes to the languages, right? Um, no longer does your race determine the type of language you get. You just get to pick two. And one of them is common. And one of them is common. <laughs> <laughs> um, another big note. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> another big note is, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but all the speeds are now 30. Yep. Um, that's a big, big change for ha- smaller races uh, like halflings and gnomes. Cause you know, that 25 uh, foot could make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was yep. an interesting one. And then spell casting, you now choose which that spell casting one instead of it being tied to one. And the also that game. is so awesome because now I can play a con. Uh, 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 you're talking. Wait, you're talking about how you get to pick intelligence, wisdom, or charisma for yeah. innate powers. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. And how they gave the natural weapons overall boost from a D4 to D6s. Yes. And um, and in a few cases, some races that had like a I resist all, all match in general just became re- resistance to well, events just spell saves. Yes, which, which means it doesn't affect attack spell attacks. Which, let's be real, kind of makes total sense because before it was kind of broken. Okay, so <laughs> there's something we talked about before the show about Goliaths. Yep. Um, and I know this is something you've brought up before, your biggest concern. Do you want to tell everyone? Because I thought this was a pretty great tra- change. What? Okay, like beforehand, the Goliaths, they had their um, Stones of Endurance trait, which was... You roll D12, add your con, and could use it once every short rest, and that was it. Mm-hmm. They changed it to you can now use it once for for each of your proficiency saving throw bonuses per long rest, which I which is a change I kind of predicted from what we saw in Fizz Banes, because mm-hmm. it seemed like they based a lot of stuff off of your proficiency bonus, which I just thought was a good idea. I'm like, okay, so this is the methodology they're going with here. I can see them doing this going forward. Yep. So that was not it changes upset with it all. And that and that applies to a lot of the short rest mechanics for uh monsters as well. Yeah. So if they had a short rest, you could usually only do it once for short rest. Now it depends on their level and their proficiency bonus. So yep. the higher the level, the more often they can use those short rest uh mechanics, which I thought was a great change. Especially since some uh racial abilities in the past have been tied to a bonus for a specific stat score, which Right, right. It's like, I get, but... Can I just take a moment to appreciate the Hobgoblin artwork where he's got, a, a, a looks like, a, what is that, a loot with an axe attached to it? Yep. Or it's an axe with a loot attached to it? Love it. The Minotaur one, not so much. <laughs> is he, is the Minotaur one is a, uh, a bard too? No, it looks like a... Oh, uh, the artwork looks lame. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a cow. Move over. <laughs> All right. And not so, like a savage bull, which yeah, no, it, it it's looks kind like, of what people liked. <laughs> so um, there's lots of good stuff in here. Like I said, there's 30 different races. Um, so this is a really great resource for any player or even DM uh, DM if you want to uh, allow these uh, quickly to uh, be available at your game without needing numerous different books that you may or may not right. get, uh, which I think is really great. Um Andrew says, uh, the proficiency bonus is how I think they could fix true strike. Apply it to the next X strikes where X is proficiency bonus. That is a really good, interesting idea. 
Interesting. So that way, so it wouldn't be, uh, you still would require concentration, but because it would apply to more attacks, it would, I could still see people making, well, yeah, because then you might, at fir first time you get it, you'll be able to immediately offset the fact that it's not better just to attack twice because it's going to help more than one attack. I would like to see the numbers on that. It's a good idea. Um, all right. So or, I'll be or with Tortal, they, they now change the deal. They can't wear armor, period. They took away their armor? No, no. They still have their natural armor. They just can't wear armor. <laughs> right, so they're basically stuck at 17. Plus a, sh plus a shield, so 19. Yeah. That's not too bad, I guess. I mean, they already had really high uh, True. Uh, benefits there. But they're stuck there. And, and there's a lot of good changes, but I think that's going to come down to who you are and what you think. Yep. Some of the ones... Yaunty. What about them? The whole sp sp spellcasting resilience, magic res resistance, once again... They have advanced on saving throws, not oh, against in, all magic. instead of all magic, yeah, yeah, which was a powerful thing to have as a player. So that's a really good change. The last thing on player options I think we need to talk on is cl classes that had subclasses. There's or sub races. There's not sub races anymore. So, for instance, the um, that's not an either or option. Yeah, <laughs> in a that nutshell, asshole. I was getting there. <laughs> that's just taking me. I Apparently, I can't find gnome. Because not Kongdom gnomes, they're Smurfeflin, or Deep Gnome. Oh, that's why! Okay, well that explains why I can't find it. But anyways, if there was a subclass before, or subrace, it's now just a collection of options. So you can kind of mix and match, which I think is pretty dope. Yep. Um, so I think that's it. Is there anything specifically you wanted to continue to touch on for the player options? Well, you, well, you mentioned you wanted to talk about the Kobold and the monster, but... Yep. And as I said, well, since we're going to talk about Cobalt as a monster, let's talk about them as the player race, too. All right. Okay, and then, the that'll race. be a good segue into it. So right. um, the Cobalt race is actually one that's really interesting because they lost a few of their more core features. Um, specifically, they no longer have sunlight sensitivity uh, across the monster or the player race, and they no longer have pack tactics. Um, Which is probably made you offset the sunlight sensitivity. But yes, hey. um, and, and I understand that that really is a, a, a thing, and that you know that's okay. But they changed their. They had an ability that was like groveling, um, and they changed it to dr uh, draconic cry instead. So they took them from being these whiny, wimpy little "I'll beg for my life" type of creatures to letting out a draconic roar or cry or something that just sounds more badass than the groveling one now i was a little kind of oh, uh, upset with that garwin says not really a fan of how they basically removed the hobgoblins military culture <clears throat> look at <clears throat> excuse me look at the names of their abilities and compare it to previous versions and that the art change for them i like the military boys um and i can understand that mindset too and i made yeah. similar statements about orcs myself so yeah I, it's like i get it also worth mentioning that the Kenku aren't stuck mimicking voices anymore. That's a shame, because I always thought that that was a good... It, it was a real challenge for a player to roleplay that. But at the same time, it's like, how can a Intelligence 20 guy not say the words they want? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can I can see that from a, 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 a story, pers or from a mechanics perspective. But... Although, if it was like a racial curse done by the gods, which it may be part of the lore, I don't remember. But... Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Because, but... um... like I said, some changes... People complain about the past, like, okay, here's their culture, here's their race, here's, like, the racial abilities. So, like, okay, but some, in many cases, though, lore-wise, those actually made sense if you read the lore, which, let's be real here, most people did not do. In many cases, yeah. they weren't communicated well in the material. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, so, uh, finishing up with the, the Cobalt. Oh, yes. it was called Gravel, Cower, and Bag. Yep. Um, so, I was a little upset with that. Um, I think but you, you do get... I think you're just trying to make them not cowards. Yeah, default. <laughs> which is a shame because they, they were always the, I can't win, so I'm going to get a hundred of my friends to come whip your ass with me. <laughs> At least that's my how I've always felt about it. Um, if you're joining us on TikTok, head over to the Red channel. You can join us and interact and chat with us live. All right, so uh, here they did give Kobolds a new ability called Kobold Legacy, which I think is pretty cool. And you basically, it's one of those you pick one of these options, craftiness, which basically lets you gain proficiency and an, uh, another skill, defiance, you gain advantage on, against being frightened, which I thought was a really nice one. And of course, draconic sorcery gives you one cantrip from the sorcerer's spell. Uh -huh. So this this really helps uh, show how versatile kobolds can be. 
and but but once again, you can choose in wisdom or charisma for your spellcasting modifier. Yep. So you can fit whatever uh, uh, class you decide to play, which is really good. Um, so I think that'll do it for talking about the the races. As I said, there's a lot of them. Um, next, we're gonna delve into the bestiary, uh, which contains over 250 monsters and NPCs. Each one represented by a stat block and story text, which has changed for some of them. Yep. Um, and it's worth noting that when Jeremy Crawford made it very clear that part of this change was so that they would fit in a multiversal setting. Um, some people don't agree with that, um, but it's your game. You can run whatever lore you want. Hell, you can pick lore from second edition and run it in your fifth edition game if you want. <laughs> or you could do Midgard campaign setting from Cobalt Press, which is really good. You should check it out. Yep. I'll say the biggest changes though are mechanically has been documented numerous times already. Mm -hmm. They got rid of the traditional spell lists in the same way the players do. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind this was for DM management. They basically made such made them like uh, like attack options, if you will, mm -hmm. that's on the stat block that explains what you do. Which the plus of mine there is I think on one hand it's less booking for the DM, which many DMs can value completely. But I've also heard like uh, some DM say okay, but these creatures now do less compared to what they used to do before. Yeah, and and there's ups and downs, right? And and the big thing I I kind of want to touch on that because there were sometimes, and I don't know how it is for you, where monsters had these just massive ass spell lists, and it it could be hard for the person to choose the right one if they weren't experienced enough in yeah. the the area. And I feel like, and I think they may have said this in their interview that. Yeah. Part of that problem was is you could have three different DMs at different skill levels run the same monster and you'll get three different results. Right. And the and the other question I've seen came up that I've yet to, as far as I know, at least see a straight answer for is, okay, but how does that affect counter spell? <laughs> and to my understanding, they are not spells. Yeah. So some I think the mage mage one, if we can find it in here, um, it no longer has you know fireball on its spell list. It has a feature. That basically is Fireball, but it's not called Fireball. Right. I'm sure there's yep. indexing here. Now, tell me which page it's on. Now, the closest I've seen so far was I've seen a lot of DMs or players say, if I'm running this this creature as it's from the step block and they're using an ability that, that is so spell-like and the player chooses to cast counter spell, I'm going to let them have it. And well, I can I can see that. I, I would agree with that. It's not in here. Which I totally get, but at the same time, it's like, but having a official Ruling. ruling would be kind of nice <laughs> yeah um you know what you can go on our twitter and tag jeremy and ask him see if he'll answer i doubt he'll answer he never answers anybody uh because he's tired of people third degreeing his decisions <laughs> uh I especially after sides. asking so uh, <laughs> i get both sides of that one though so so talking more a little bit about the monster stat blocks ian already mentioned uh that's a big change i've also noticed that they've moved bonus actions mm -hmm. down into the actions category right it's also worth mentioning too that they also did change a lot of the numbers for some of the creatures. Mm -hmm. But probably the idea was they're trying to make them, in many cases, more in line with what their CR is. Which, especially with the other changes they may or may not have made, too. And that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, on the, 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 the spell listing thing, yeah. um, their spell lists have shrank a lot, too. Yeah. Like, some of them that had, like, 12 spells now have, like, five. Uh, which once again is to get the character DM to play the character as it was intended. Which which is on the less versatility part I mentioned earlier. Right. But, uh, uh, <laughs> Chill draws asks, is it so that they can be nerfed by uh, can't be nerfed by counter spell? Why even have counter spell then to nerf utility of spells? And short version, we don't know. That's the question that's, a lot of people are asking. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's kind of what his point is. We there because there's not an official ruling um that, that, that I've seen. Yeah. Yes. And if you've got one, share in the comments or tag us or something. We'd love to see it. But if you're reading it as raw, these aren't spells, they're abilities. Um, you've seen monsters that can use, you know, the 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 action to do something that's spell like and before it wasn't able to be countered. Now maybe it can be. Welcome. Um, hey, there daddy is. Not my daddy, the, the daddy of that's right. Call me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can we just take a moment to appreciate the artwork, though? The artwork is always stellar with uh, the content that comes from Wizards of the Coast. Except, I mean, the, except the Minotaur. Except, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> Minotaur wasn't super great, but... Uh, it was a cow. <laughs> so, one of the other things that I don't like that they did, and I'm going to tell you why. So, welcome me. 
<laughs> is uh, the proficiency bonus is now in the stat block. And I don't like this because <laughs> before, and Jeremy Crawford has said this to my understanding, that monsters aren't bound by the same rules, especially when you create them, here, let's take a peek, as the players are. So players have certain proficiency bonus. That's all you get. But you easily could give a monster an extra, you know, two points in a skill that they're proficient in without needing to justify it somewhere in the stat block. Right. I like that. I like that versatility. Now, if I want to, say, give that thief an extra plus two, so instead of a proficiency bonus of two, I give him a four. Now I've got to put that in the stat block because somebody on the internet is going to be like, oh, it doesn't match up there. Which has happened to me, even though in the book it told me not I didn't matter. So, I don't like that change <laughs> at all. But that's a personal uh, opinion of mine. Uh, Brandon, do you have any comments? I know you just got here. No? Okay. Yeah. We'll continue. So, um, what are some of the other big changes that you noticed that really stuck out, Ian? Anything that's maybe not necessarily tied to a specific uh character or uh monster and like i said they they have changed from the lore here and there for for some, some things we, we did touch on and once again a lot of people have have mixed feelings on it and as i said before i see both sides to it yeah and given the fact there was over 250 entries for creatures in there it's kind of hard to gravitate towards anything in particular but yeah, yeah. i would say um <laughs> The thing that stood out to me were iconic monsters. Yeah. Like the Beholders are no longer xenophobic, um, narcissistic a-holes. Even though that's been their entire Even though thing. that's their <laughs> shtick. Now, there's nothing from stopping us from running them that way. And I will continue to do so yep. uh, because I'm not necessarily uh, a conservative keeping the lore. But when I think Beholder, that's what I think. And, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also understand that they don't want necessarily those features to be locked when you include them into your your own worlds or any multiversal w w uh, areas you go into. And of course, there's the argument of even when they change it, you could have anyway, but then that becomes circular logic has both sides can make that argument. So yeah. <laughs> you really like to ride that line. I can see both sides, don't you? Yeah, but and you, I know you find it annoying, but at the same time, I know you get it. I get it. But yes, it can be annoying. <laughs> Just a straight answer. This is dumb. <laughs> That'll be the day. Oh, there's another There's another change. Although, if you hear ever say it's dumb, that should tell you something. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so, Fey Ancestry. Yeah, they threw that out to quite a few of these, actually. Th that is no longer what it once was. No. Um, I need this. So I want to get the actually I'm sure I've got something on this list what here. What is it now? Uh or is it trance? Is it Fey Ancestry or Chance they changed? Yes. <sighs> Damn it. <man. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Let me look for elf here. Uh, they... Fey, 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 actually they did cuz they do document both in changes. So <laughs> So Fey Ancestry, right? So what's it say? All right, for for Fey, Fey Ancestry, magical go sleep of this trait has been moved to the trance feature. Yep. Which is now given to goblin noise which includes Goblins, hobgoblins, bugbears, which I thought was odd, but yeah, some people have said goblins have been fey in the past, so it's not, so not some people have thought it was a return to form. In trance, as mentioned above, it now grants immunity to magical slumber. Now, more clearly specified that you're conscious while making the long rest. And we now finish the long rest, it gets you two to gain two proficiencies you did not have before. And each must be a weapon or tool of your choice that isn't a PHB. These last until the end of your next long rest. <laughs> You don't want to look to that no more? So Delcinia says, oh, come on, that's awesome. Or that was awesome. The advantage against charm was great. I disagree as somebody who's always trying to charm the party members. <laughs> that's always a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, they did change a lot of resistances and immunities. Some of the, uh, like, um, some of them went from immunity down to, like, resistance, which I thought was interesting. Or saves and not. Yeah, so. Attacks. There's really a lot to go on, uh, going on in this book. And honestly, overall, I think the changes are for the better. Yeah. Uh, overall, with yes. the exception yeah. of maybe some of the, the lore changes from a historic standpoint. I understand wanting to be able to change lore like goblins and stuff like that. But um, the iconic ones, they are trying to, you know, fit them, make them more 
um, malleable, right, for any setting, right. uh, which is good. Uh, Delcinia says, as a player who deals with a DM that loves hags, it was great. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, so, uh, Brandon, what are your thoughts on this book, looking through it for the first time? Or what you may have heard before. <laughs> Much time to look through it. Are these... Are these new uh, races you can actually play as? No, yeah. they're all old races. They just revamped them. Yeah, they're old races that are from a collection of different books compiled into one. Which, once again, w 30 be... is a lot. I want to be a fairy. I want to be a Genasi. <laughs> I like Genasi. They, ooh, that's the other thing they changed. They changed yeah. the way the Genasi's spells work. Yeah, they um, did. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, oh, shit, hang on, let me find it here. Because I thought that was like that was such a huge, huge change. Yep. Okay. So uh for one thing, they can all now be medium or small, which that was interesting. <laughs> that was a, that was a good change too. Like you can change your size depending on how you want to roll. Um so uh the 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 Genasi spells, I think they give them access to different spells now. Yeah. You get more powerful ones, but it's delayed on when you get them. Is that correct? It uh, so some of them, yes. Is that not for, true for all of them? Um, I just don't want to make a blanket statement without <laughs> right, right, without actually having it in front of us. Well, we do have it in front of us, but right. we're not mm. going to jump through it because we only have two minutes left to talk about our main topic. And let's be real here: with only half hour, we can only scratch the surface so much. Yeah, and <laughs> and once again, um, this book is a one-stop shop for you as a player and dungeon master. Um, obviously it's mostly geared towards the, uh, <laughs> chill draws like, wait, I can be a small Genasi sweet. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, and I think that's one of the reasons why they changed the foot movement. Yeah. So it would, uh, you wouldn't be penalized for wanting to be smaller. Um, but once again, yeah, short legs. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, all right. So is there any other things we wanted to touch on? Uh, I, there's one more I want to touch on, but do you guys have anything? Not at the top of my head. Brandon, do you want to tell us about uh, oh, the challenge rating changes? Challenge rating changes. Uh, while few players reach some of the upper echelons, echelons of D&D gaming. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, those of us that do reach those levels have found that monsters tend to feel like they are pulling their punches. Huh. So thanks to Lost Odyssey of Theros adding the mythic trait, those monsters are less so. But the Wizards of the Coast game design lead is well aware of it. Thus, the monsters are getting big changes. As Jeremy Crawford told Gizmodo, we've gotten pretty consistent feedback since the core books in 2014, that's for sure. Jeez, 2014. God, I'm old. <laughs> it's, it's... <laughs> it hasn't been that long. Yes, it has. My God. Uh, the, a number of our high Sierra monsters felt a bit too weak. Mm -hmm. Like they were punching below their challenge rating, and that that does seem true, doesn't yeah, it? So, yeah. So, and now it seems clear that it won't. They're not. They didn't get an overhaul, but instead, some of the higher CR monsters are just getting beefed up. Uh, I thought you were going to get so they made them the proper CRs. So when, <laughs> uh, so you know, Jeremy said that part of this. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely having dra dragon troll flashbacks. <laughs> dragon troll. That's dra a thing. Dra dragon right. turtle. Dragon, Dragon Turtle. Turtle. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so part of, the, uh, according to Jeremy Crawford, part of this work uh, for Mordekainen's uh, um, book here is changing how these monsters earn their challenge rating. The calculation was awful. <laughs> uh, in the previous books, the monsters did hit their challenge ratings, but we used different method to hit it. In the past, all the monster had to do was have a set combat options. A set of combat options that if the DM chose the right set, the monster's challenge monsters challenge rating would, would be there. You know, here's the issue with that approach. If the DM doesn't happen to pick the golden path of abilities, a number of those monsters then fall uh, under their challenge rating, which is definitely um, a problem. So in Monsters of the Multiverse, they changed their approach. They've now made it so that each of the monsters have multiple choice sequences that lead to the same CR calculation. And so that's going to, what that's going to do is give groups who have never fought the optimal version of a monster way more powerful. <laughs> You're boned. Uh, they did also uh, protect their non-combat options. So it is possible for a monster to not be as threatening as CR, CR may seem. Um, but it did, they did make it clear to the DM in this book that when they are taking the path, the DM will be able to make more informed choices. And I think that that's a real <clears throat> critical aspect. That kind of, you know, reminds me how back in fourth edition, there was a lot of complaints about how the earlier release monsters, the fights went too long. 
Mm-hmm. And part of that was because they felt the monsters didn't do enough damage. They had way too much health. Mm-hmm. So I do know the common compensation was, it was like a lot of DMs like, okay, we'll cut their health in half, but double their damage. Which yeah. did speed up combat, but still kept them threatening. So, yeah. uh, Chill Draw says, so this could be considered the first 5.5 book. Yes, I would agree with that that statement. Certainly a stepping stone. Well, I'll actually we'll get them on the Fizzbanes, but yes. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you're right. Fizzbangs came out first. <laughs> but this is a, a continuation, and I think this is the direction they're going to be taking it. So that's all that I wanted to get out, obviously. I wish. Uh, what's up? Can we all just agree that centaurs are weird? Yep. Yes. Do the pants go over the backside or like the bottom half of both front and back legs? Pants. Pants. Yeah. Like, how does a centaur wear pants? They don't. They don't. Uh, that's a problem. What if they're in public? <laughs> Their dong is just hanging for everyone to see? Same with the horse. Yeah, but the horse is not a sentient creature that can walk into a, a whorehouse around the corner and go, <laughs> I ever seen Mikey say zoo? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that gap between the teeth looks like your mama had an affair with Mr. Red. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think that'll do it for our main topic today. Uh, I really wish Wizards would have released this so I could buy the digital version. I wanted to show you guys this as we talked about it, Uh, but they didn't, and they managed to squeeze more money out than I wanted to invest in books I already have. I'm sure there's some uh, (laughs) uh, PDS with a Jolly Roger on on them out there somewhere. (laughs) Not that we're encouraging that! (laughs) Brian Minis says, wow, y'all went there. Oh, you have no idea. We've went there, we've been there, and we'll keep going back. Yep. <laughs> Still talking uh, the centaur shit? What? Yeah. <laughs> Guess so. All right. So uh, before we move on to our honor tips and tricks, I want to tell you guys all about our Warlord Martial class coming out February 12th. You've heard me talk about it on the show, myself and Ian. Fourth edition, despite what everyone says, was a good game system. It, as long as you went in there with the right expectations. Yes. If you weren't expecting D&D, you didn't get that. If you went in expecting a good tactical RPG, you got that. Well, Warlord was one of my favorite classes. It is a non-magical class that yells and screams, Fusro Da! to buff everybody up all the time. And it was only a matter of time before I took that and converted it to 5th edition. Um, thanks to DM's Guild, we can use that lore yep. and, and that IP to, to bring that to life. And I'm super excited for this. It uses its, its hit die as a source to wield its power instead of spell slots or something along those lines. So when you uh, raise a, a, a battle shout, is what they're called, a bat- one, is one of the shouts, uh, is a battle shout, you'll spend a, a number of hit die up to your proficiency bonus and grant some sort, of, uh, some sort of buff to your allies. It might be a damage increase, it might be a chance to succeed, uh, increase, uh, add dice roll added to saves, um, it does, uh, there's there's like 12 of them. There's a lot. And uh, I don't really remember them all because I wrote it like six months. We wrote it like six months ago or so. So it's been a while. But uh, I'm super excited. And hopefully you guys will keep an eye out and will want to enjoy that. Because we feel like they're, we set a poll out there a while ago that asks, what kind of classes would you like to see? And more Marshall was one of the top answers that yeah. aren't in, based on spells. Yeah. Now, I definitely don't m- mind making the Warlord its own class again, but I'm still surprised that Wizards actually didn't release it as a archetype, if you will, for the, the fighter. fighter. Yep. Which well, I, they kind of get do cover it a little bit with a feat and some of the maneuvers. And I feel like that's what they tried to do with the Purple Dragon Knight. But yeah. as I said before on the uh, on our conversation, you're like, you're like, do you know why people put the Purple Dragon Knight? Or why? Because they suck. <laughs> I was trying to get at the fact that it is tied so much to lore but yeah he's right the mechanics weren't designed well either no. anyway so uh please consider keeping an eye out for that and if you want to try a fun martial support class that takes the front buffs their allies please consider uh picking up the warlord by crit academy 